Hey guys, Dave here, and this is Prey running on PC at 1080p 60 frames per second, fully maxed out. And yeah, it's the ultimate way to play the game. In fact, Prey appears to be designed with ultra high frame rates in mind, with the mimic enemies darting around the screen quickly, requiring precise controls and fast reflexes. And this is something that only the PC version can deliver. The consoles run at 30 frames per second, but that's not the case on PC. And the good news is you don't need ultra powerful hardware to achieve this. Now for most games that's not particularly surprising, but it is for Prey because it's using CryEngine, and typically CryEngine titles are very demanding, and hitting 60 frames per second using the very high preset that's maxed out is usually very difficult. But in this case Prey runs like a dream on both mid-range and lower end graphics cards, and here we're going to be showing you exactly how to achieve this. So to kick things off, here's the GTX 1060 and RX 580, two of the most popular mid-range graphics cards available, and GPUs ideal for targeting 1080p at 60 frames per second. There's plenty of headroom to spare, and the good news is we didn't have to lower any settings to achieve this. That's right, both GPUs can comfortably get 60 frames per second using the very high preset, and that's the game running at maximum. So we've got full resolution, ambient occlusion, and screen space reflections, two of the most demanding graphical features in the game. And of course we're using the highest quality presets for things like shadows, the best textures, and a high level of anisotropic filtering. It really is the way the game was meant to be played, and the good news is you don't need ultra high-end GPUs to do it. What's interesting here is that the level of headroom available means the potential for pushing settings up further. Now we can't adjust the level of visual effects any higher, but what we can do is up the resolution. Between the two cards the GTX 1060 takes the lead here, and has more headroom available. This essentially means that you're less likely to dip below 60 FPS as you up those pixel counts. But in terms of 1080p at 60 with max settings, then both GPUs do a great job here and you shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. Okay, so that extra headroom then. We decided to see just how far we could push both of these GPUs in terms of resolution. And the next logical jump is 1440p. Now, I'm gonna say it, Running max settings targeting 60 FPS just isn't possible here. Both cards regularly drop below that target and the result is a gameplay experience that has more stutter than we want. Ideally we want a complete lock at 60 FPS on PC. We lowered graphical quality down to the high preset as a base and then made small adjustments from there. In this case we kept texture quality at very high as both GPUs have enough VRAM to accommodate it and it didn't impact on performance. And likewise anisotropic filtering we left at 16 times. However we did need to lower the anti-aliasing down by one notch to SMAA 1TX and of course the screen space, directional ambient occlusion and screen space reflections both needed to be dropped half resolution. But doing so does indeed get us that 60 frames per second lock, for the most part at least. And the GTX 1060 generally does a great job here. If you're looking for a basically locked 60 FPS, then this card definitely delivers with these settings. In terms of the RX 580, the card hands in generally excellent performance, but it's not quite enough to deliver a locked 60 frames per second, and there are moments where metrics do drop just below. Thankfully it doesn't happen very often and the impact on performance is minimal. We're talking about the high 50s here, so you can still get a great experience. But between the two, you've definitely got more headroom to spare on the GTX 1060 in action heavy scenes. And that means you're more likely to get a 60 FPS lock across a general run of play, whereas on the RX 580 you're kind of straddling the line between hitting and just going below 60 FPS at certain points. But ultimately these settings do the job in getting you a 60 FPS experience at 1440p with both cards. And that's pretty impressive stuff for a CryEngine title and for these mid-range GPUs which are better suited to 1080p 60. But again 1440p at 60 frames it works for Prey. So far we've been looking at getting a better than console experience on PC, higher frame rates and even at higher resolutions. But what about the budget gaming rig? In this case the GTX 1050 and RX 460 paired with a Pentium G4560 
yeah it's kind of entry level stuff and we thought that we'd potentially have to settle for 30 frames per second with PlayStation 4 level settings. However that's not necessarily the case, at least on the GTX 1050. Now as we've seen the Nvidia cards have the advantage just because there's more headroom left over and when looking at these budget cards that translates into a 60fps experience being possible with the GTX 1050 whereas the RX 460 often falls short. In terms of settings we're mostly running at the high preset here with visual effects roughly in line with PlayStation 4 so screen space reflections are turned off and we're looking at high quality for shadows and object detail. However we did have to lower texture quality down to medium. Essentially with the GTX 1050 we were running out of VRAM here and what was happening was that the game was basically dynamically switching out high quality textures for lower ones quite aggressively and this was happening across the general run of play so it was pretty noticeable. The PlayStation 4 game roughly runs with high level textures so we are experiencing a small drop in quality here but the result is you get consistent artwork across the board and I feel that's kind of more important. It's also worth noting that we're not getting 30 frames per second here. The GTX 1050 can deliver 60 frames per second at 1080p. It's not perfect and there are a couple of drops just below but for the most part the experience is very consistent and you shouldn't have that many problems here. And the fact that you're getting this level of performance on a budget rig, well that's pretty incredible really and shows just how scalable Prey really is despite using CryEngine. On the other hand if you've got an RX 460 the results are disappointing. The card doesn't have the headroom required to hit 60 frames per second and in fact the experience is usually between 40 to 50 FPS thereabouts. It's not really good enough. And in this case, if you've got a budget PC, we recommend the Nvidia card. Overall then, if you're looking to run Prey at 60 frames per second, then you don't need top spec hardware to do it. The GTX 1060 and RX 580 do a great job here, and even 1440p is on the cards with some small settings adjustment. And the fact that you can even get 1080p 60 on a budget Pentium and GTX 1050, well, that's great. Anyway, I think that's about it. I hope you found this tweaking guide useful, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.